Welcome to Up All Night DIY. I'm Monica. Thanks for joining me. It's the vintage retro Halloween collab. So excited. This is my first time hosting, and I'm so proud to have Indiana Jones as my co host. Not to mention that some amazingly talented friends are joining us. Retro Halloween has always been a favorite, and it's trending now. So let's get into it. I'm still crafting from my stash. And when I went to grab supplies, I realized that I only had these large styrofoam balls. So this guy is gonna be much bigger than I had anticipated. I'm using a 4.7 inch and a 5.6 inch ball. So as I said, much larger than usual. First thing I'll do is I'll cut a small flat spot on the top and bottom of both balls. This will keep them from rolling and make them easier to stack. I'm covering them with Crayola air dry clay, of which I'll grab a handful. I'll knead it and flatten it nice and thin. Because the balls are so big, I'll add the clay in sections, much easier to handle this way. I press the clay onto the ball, making sure it's really stuck on there. And I'll use my fingers to blend each piece of clay with the next section. I'll completely cover both balls with the clay in this way. I won't worry about any bump shed. Once they're covered, I'll smooth it out. And to do that, I just roll it on my table and tap it with the palm of my hand, roll my brayer on it. <laughs> I, it won't be perfect, but that's okay. I like some texture to it. Also, I always keep water handy when working with clay, adding a bit when the clay feels dry. I also use it to blend the sections together. I cut a skewer into four or five pieces. I'll use these to anchor the smaller ball to the larger ball. I'll push them in about halfway, and then I will push the small ball, which will be his head, onto the skewers. I roll a snake, which I use to fill the gap between the head and body. I use my fingers to flatten it and incorporate it into the other clay. I'm just pressing it in there nice and firm. I use a paintbrush to dampen the clay and I used a handle to roll the new clay into the clay of the head and body. Using my fingers to help smooth it. I'll go completely around until it's all blended. I use the bottom of a shot glass to make an impression in the clay for his eyes. I'll just press it into the clay, twist it a bit. I really just want a slight indent as a marker. And I'm using some water to smooth the clay a bit. With the end of my brush, I'll add two teardrop shapes between his eyes. This will be his nose. I push it in and drag it down using my damp brush to smooth the rough clay. I roll a thin snake, which I used to outline his eye, but I wind up removing the top part, just leaving the bottom part like a bottom eyelid sort of, which I blend it with the surrounding clay. You can kind of see here what I mean. Now I'll add his cheeks. I rolled a ball of clay and I'll cut it in half. I'll place his cheeks just below his lower eyelid and incorporate it just as I did before. I just keep working at it until it's nice and smooth. It doesn't take long. I rolled a thicker snake, which I'll cut in half. These would be his arms. They're fighting me. They don't want to come fray. There we go. I pop those into place, pressing them, and making sure that they're well adhered. And I'll use my brush and water to blend them into the body. i 
he'll be holding a sign. So I'll make a hole in his hand with the dale. I push it three quarters of the way through. I don't want it to actually poke out the bottom. This guy is a cross between a ghost and a skeleton. I'm just calling him Creep because he is kind of creepy, but he's cute too. To make his hat, I roll another snake, tapering one end, and I flatten the bottom by tapping it on the table. And you'll see the tip curls over while tapping. So I'm just going with it. I push a few toothpicks into his head and I'll push his hat into place again, blending it into the surrounding clay. Now I'll loosely cover it with a plastic bag to prevent cracking and I set him aside for a few days to dry. So let's work on his sign in the meantime. I'll paint the dowel white with ceram coat wipe acrylic paint. Once dry, I wrap tape in a swirl design down the length of it. And then I paint over that with ceram coat charcoal. When dry, I peel the tape, revealing the cute swirl. Reminds me of a pixie stick. I make a paper medallion for his sign. So I have some scrap strips of paper. I've trimmed the striped to one and a half inch and the dots to two inch. And I've marked a half inch down on the stripe. I'll glue the dots just below that line. So now I have two strips at two and a half inch wide by 12 inch long. This is a great way to use up scrap paper or even just to save on paper. At two and a half inches wide, this will give me a five inch circumference to my medallion. With my Martha Stewart scoreboard, I score the printed side every inch, and then I'll flip it over and score at every half inch. And then I'll accordion fold them. I use hot glue to connect the ends, forming a loop. I push down, forming the medallion, and I'll glue a piece of a craft stick to the center on the back of the medallion while holding the medallion in position. This will add extra support to keep the shape because they like to pop up and you know kind of spread apart this is a good way to keep it nice and firm on the front I glue a cardstock circle to the center this is also for additional support then I'll glue my center design in place I made this in Photoshop boom I glue the dowel in place on the back and cover it with another cardstock circle just to neaten it up. Later, I use black ink and I distress the sign and I add some baker string to the dowel. Back to Creep. He's dry, but even though he was loosely covered with a plastic bag, he still has some serious cracking. I've decided to roll with it. I do like a little bit of cracking. I think it adds interest and adds to the overall effect. This is a wee bit more than usual though. I'll paint his entire head and his hands with ceram coat white. The whole time I was painting him, I had my fingers crossed that he wouldn't chip. Luckily, he's still in one piece. I'm pretty sure that he's cracking because it's layers covering styrofoam, the arms, hat, and cheeks are solid clay, and there's no cracks. His hat and sleeves will be ceram coat charcoal. There is a lot of cracking around the base of the hat, so I do my best to keep the paint line as straight as possible. 
It'll get covered with garland anyway, so I won't sweat it if it's not perfect. It's the same around his arms. Not quite as many cracks as around his hat, but still more than usual. So I like to outline like his arms and whatnot before I fill them in. I think it just makes it easier for me to keep it nice and neat. His body will be ceramic coat pumpkin. I paint around his arms first, outlining them, just like I just mentioned. Um, and then I'll fill in the rest of his body. Now that he's base coated, it's time for some details. I'll use a dauber to poke dot his hat with white, rain gray, and spiced pumpkin. No rhyme or reason, just anywhere I think a dot needs to go. I alternate the same colors with stripes on his sleeves. Using a dale, I dipped up buttons down his belly with charcoal, rain, and white. And I make them slightly askew from each other, the gray off-center from the charcoal and the white off-center from the gray. I dipped out his eyes with charcoal right in the center. I paint a small triangle bottom left of his eyes, um, like a highlight, and then I white dot in the very center. With my liner brush and charcoal, I add his mouth. It'll be toothy and kind of rictus. He needs eyebrows, and I'll fill in the dips in his nose. I dry brush some shading in his teeth with ring gray, and a wee bit on his cheeks, and on his lower eyelids and his nose. And then I will brush around the outline of his eyes to define them. I did go back in later and add some orange to his cheeks, but I didn't get that on camera. I'm just following along that impression, that indent that was made with the shot glass. Now I will dry brush him with hippo gray all over. This is where the cracks will become obvious. The paint will catch in all those cracks and nooks and crannies and really add to his vintage look. I felt that his features needed more definition, so that's what I'm doing here. I'm just reinforcing all of his features with hippo gray. To seal him, I'll pounce on a layer of Mod Podge with a cosmetic sponge. To embellish, I glue some garland around his hat and collar. I made this garland from crepe paper. I actually make this in my very first video. I'll link it in the description box. It's super easy to make. I'm using fabric glue to attach it, but hot glue works too. I go around his hat twice once around his collar. All he needs now is his sign. I just pop it into his hand and there he is in all of his retro Halloween creepiness. This dude really had me concerned, but thankfully he turned out pretty cool. Creepy, but cool. 
Special thanks to Indiana Jones for co-hosting my first collab. And I want to thank all my friends for participating, especially Jackie, Connie, LaParsha, Robin, Tammy, and Carolyn. You'll find links to Annie's channel and the playlist below. And I want to thank all of you for watching. Please like, share, comment, and subscribe, and all that good stuff. I hope you all had as much fun as we did. We'll all have plenty more Halloween and fall videos in the coming weeks. Stay creative, my friends. Thanks for hanging with me. See you next time. Up all night with Monica.